Hey everybody, this is Carlos Azalar, founder and CEO of G2 Esports, former professional gamer and wonderful bodybuilder, as you may have known. Of course, you know me for that, pretty sure. And you're watching Dan Ken's channel, Thorin, my man. Enjoy. If you look through the scene, and particularly this is emphasized in the great esports organizations, the teams like Fnatic, SK Gaming, Mouse Sports, Evil Geniuses, Complexity, depending on what kind of scale we're going on and at what points in time. These teams that don't just have modern day competitors, championships, glory, etc., but have this legacy that goes in the past of greatness, championships, dominance, being iconic organizations with iconic players. Where are the connections between those organizations and those names which made those organizations legendary, helped them accomplish those feats that last throughout history, helped establish a winning culture or a lineage, a legacy that lasts to today, which combined with the efforts of others that came after them and business ventures have allowed these orgs to continue on through history, survive till now, perhaps even thrive now, depending on which teams we're talking about. Where is the connection? Where is the celebration of that history? You don't really see it. Quite frankly, esports teams, even those with long, long histories, are doing a terrible to non-existent job at maintaining ties with the legendary iconic players of their time or promoting them or working with them or bringing them back into the fold with some sort of like a jersey retirement, a celebration, maybe even some sort of an ambassadorial role within the team, could even have some sort of a contract agreement where you pay them a percentage in order to use their likeness to promote them by promoting their history with the org and therefore build history. Because if you contrast this with traditional sports, you can go throughout most of the legendary organizations, the most of the legendary franchises and teams, and you will find that the great players are either still promoted by the org, famously have been connected with the org after their time, are willing to even come along sometimes for free, just out of their goodwill, and help the org, lend a hand at times, provide kind of backup in times where they're changing managers, changing star players, a transition phase. So think of some of those orgs, like in the NFL, one of the great NFL franchises is obviously the Green Bay Packers. Well, yes, in the modern day, Aaron Rodgers is their star player. Brett Favre was their star player before that. But the original star player in many senses for the Green Bay Packers is obviously the legendary quarterback, Bart Starr. And if you go back and you look throughout their history, they obviously reference this guy. They obviously celebrate their history with this guy, what an important role he played, making them one of the great franchises, one of the winning franchises. He's someone who has a relationship with Aaron Rodgers, the starting quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. He's someone who can come in and can give his thoughts and can be associated so that the greatness that he accomplished in the past isn't dead and buried. It can still be present now and it can be connected to current day, present glory, success, competition, drive you go look the los angeles lakers yes they've had shaq and corby and all these others but magic johnson there's a reason why he was even hired to their organization they want to maintain that tie with him perhaps the greatest player they ever had depending on who how you rank them in history you go and you hear all these stories even when he's not within the org directly he's always promoting them in the media he's helped in the past give the word to certain players who might want to go there or coaches who might want to be a part of the organization if you think in the NHL, so I've got NFL, I've got NBA. In the NHL, one of the great franchises is obviously the Boston Bruins. Even recently, they almost won a championship. But they also absolutely celebrate, venerate, revere the legacy that Bobby Orr, the truly great defenseman, was able to create there. And that dynasty that he was a part of. Doesn't matter that that was like at this point in time, like 50 years ago. They still will reference that. Obviously, he, he's not in a position where he can necessarily do anything with them at this point in time. Then we'll go to, for a European example. So how about we go to the English Premier League? Manchester United, one of the most winningest teams of the last 20 years. Who is their great player in history who they still associate very closely with? It's obviously Bobby Charlton from many, many, we're talking 50, 60 years ago at this point in time. They absolutely still associate with the club. Someone who you'll see used in merchandising materials, his era promoted, asked for his opinion on things, kept very much within the culture and close to the club for what he accomplished, what he meant to their club. But then you go into esports and you look at the great organizations that we've had, 
And their iconic players are barely even connected. Like, if I didn't tell you about their history and you didn't watch them play, you wouldn't even know these guys had any connection. You wouldn't even know there was an esports history in the past. You don't even know what they do now and what they will do in the future. So, SK Gaming, formerly Short Commando, is one of the original great orgs. One of the ones that accomplished amazing things from the early 2000s. Up until recently, they obviously had a great Brazilian squad a couple of years ago. Well, who is their most iconic player in the entire history of their org? It is without a doubt, Heaton, the legendary player who now is a partial owner of NIP. He helped build a dynasty at their team, coming from NIP originally, built this amazing winning culture at SK Gaming when he was there for a couple of years. But they barely reference him themselves. He almost never addresses them. And if he does, it's often with negative things to say. They're not able to cross-promote in any way. He's often a totally different org. And there's just nothing to do with that, right? Then we go to their rivals, Fnatic, in many games. League of Legends, CSGO, Warcraft. So if you go over to Fnatic, I mean, maybe not Warcraft 3. That's a bit more of a reach on that one. Maybe Starcraft, you could say. The best player historically for Fnatic, the greatest player they've probably ever had through their doors in any game, is Forrest, one of the greatest Counter-Strike players of all time. Some people call him the greatest Counter-Strike player of all time. He was their best player for many, many years. He was the franchise player. He was one of the backbones of their squad. He won two majors playing for them in CS 1.6. But again, you will probably associate him, if you were at the end of 1.6, with SK Gaming. And if you're in CSGO, obviously with NIP. You don't think of him as a fanatic player, right? He has nothing to do with them. They don't really have anything to do with him. If they talk about his era, they're going to talk about Khan, a player who's still with the team, obviously in a management role, the CGO. They're not going to talk about Forrest as much. And Forrest himself isn't going to reference fanatic very much he's going to think about his current team i'll give you a league of legends example how about cloud nine so if i think of cloud nine league of legends the main name that comes to my mind is high the legendary mid laner the support mid laner as he called himself the guy who was able to shot call that team through so many epic matches get them two back-to-back uh nalcs championships the most insane win rates imaginable pretty much, pretty solid international results overall, nothing compared to what's been possible in the last year and a half or so, but a different meta, a different area in time, and was clearly one of the most important players to ever play in that organization. It might not be even be an exaggeration to say without high, Cloud9 as a business I think would have succeeded, but they wouldn't as a team be held in anywhere near as much esteem as they are now, and especially not in League of Legends in my opinion, or at least it would have taken a lot longer to happen. So, Obviously, history matters. I mean, it matters to me particularly, but I think it matters to everyone. And the the longer esports goes on, the bigger these games get, the more established elite level competition we have, the more history is relevant, the more people care about it, want to know about it. So why aren't we celebrating it within these orgs? Why don't we remember the great players that played for these orgs that made them iconic orgs because they were iconic players? Why don't we link what happened in the past to the present? It's a way to market yourself, to build more brand loyalty. Okay, right now your team might be hot ship. You had some great players in the past. Remind the newer fans of that. Combine Interest in the past with interest with current results. If you've got a winning team, again, get Bart Starr and Aaron Rodgers, get them together when the Green Bay Packers win a championship. Now you're able to create this sense of a lineage of true history, of greatness in the past, greatness in the future, and that this org must in some way be connected to it, right? You build the brand as well. It's a way to set a culture within your team. If you're Manchester United and you're going through hard times now, you bring Bobby Charlton in the dressing room and have him give a speech to the players about a time when his team was on the come up and they became champions, they're going to fucking listen. They might not listen listen to the manager now they might not listen to another player it's going to be hard not to listen to a legend like that though isn't it that's why they famously have these great players come in for key speeches for playoff scenarios i remember seeing ray lewis came in and gave a speech to the ravens locker room when they were in a poor period of form a couple of years ago and obviously told them you know about how much he worked and battled and how they had to fight and establish home field advantage and you know don't let the enemy come in the door and take you home all the great shit you want to hear and it means something because it has a gravitas when ray lewis tells you that and he was a lifelong ball more Raven. It's another way also, by the way, to secure new talents, to secure new great players to your org now, even though you're talking about using someone from the years back who in the game isn't relevant, but is relevant in history. If you go and you want to negotiate to get a big name player to come to your org, if you have a legend in the meeting, a guy who can vouch for you, a guy who can tell you what the culture is like in this team, can tell you what they were able to do for him, you increase your chances of signing that player. We've heard stories about how the Lakers have used Magic Johnson and Kobe Bryant and other people like that at the time. I mean, we're talking about teams where you can imagine if you were able to be Cloud9 and have someone like a high in there, 
or ha be Forrest and, and you're part of Fnatic's meetings, you could really swear you were a player. Even if Fnatic and Cloud9 at the moment in time that you're trying to sign this player, maybe they're not the best teams. Maybe they're not teams as great as those players played for. So what, what the obvious question is, why hasn't it happened? Why doesn't it happen? Why probably will it not happen for, I would guess, probably decades at this point in time? Well, I mean, one reason, it's a very quick one, and actually my examples should probably highlight it, is some of those legends still haven't fully retired. Or if they retired, they went and made their own org, or they went to a different org, had more success there, or significant success that they still remember. And so they either associate with that org, or they're directly in that org, or they haven't got to the point yet where you can fully bring them back in the fold. If you're a fanatic, you should probably wait till Forrest retires, then try and get him back in the fold and use him in these purposes, and remember the great times he had together, and, and just put aside for the moment the times you work together and the squabbles then there's the fact that in many cases there wasn't enough history until recently like sure to me complexity winning the world championship 14 years ago is a massive deal and they should definitely be working with fraud etc but if they hadn't brought him back as a coach is that still enough time for them to do that? No, they're probably focused on the day-to-day -day now, right? They're probably looking at the future. They're probably trying to build their next championship squad. They maybe haven't thought about it. So it's also a lack of vision, a lack of ambition in this particular respect. In terms of complexity, a little bit more of a tenuous one because they have done documentaries and they have done some things. Admittedly, because they haven't been as great in the modern day. So they've cleverly actually, I think, been one of the few examples of someone who has understood some of this. You've got to also add in, there have been a lot of bad breakups in esports. Either someone left because they feel like they weren't paid money or they weren't paid enough money or they were kicked and they didn't like it or they left to another team because they didn't like the way things were handled. So there's a lot of bad feelings going on there. There's even bad feelings like some of them feel like because they are the iconic players that built those orgs, they're entitled to equity or why don't I get to benefit from the future of this org whereas you're going to make millions and millions off the back of what I did. Not necessarily entirely wrong. Certainly a bit disingenuous in terms of the fact that they did have contracts, receive living wages, negotiate those contracts and at no point in time did they ever actually push for that so that's just someone at sour grapes at the end looking back going but you really won out on your part why couldn't I have had that it's like well you didn't do anything for that so again I can totally see why that could very easily happen for players though maybe they felt like the salary they got wasn't what they should have gotten at the time all sorts of factors there's the fact that in the modern day do you have their likeness rights? Can you actually use them in this? Would they have to sign up to do so? If so, is it going to be trickier to cross-promote? Will they want some sort of a fee? Or will they still hold things against you? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of tough angles to get this to work as easily as in a sport where maybe you did play for one team and maybe afterwards you have no other opportunities in the same sense. The reason why I hope it happens though is because I've explained why it helped the org. I've explained generally why it's a good thing for esports, but it helps the star himself as well as long as the terms make sense. He can stay relevant in the modern world and remind people of what he accomplished. He can now have a base of support beyond people who remember his period in time because he can connect to the newer fans of that team and newer fans in general who learn about his accomplishments and the accomplishments of the team and it builds his brand it builds loyalty to him in terms of fans of that team still pulling for him still being interested in him still wanting to hear about him and see him as part of it so I actually see it as generally a net positive for everyone if this can happen it's just at the moment we haven't really got the execution down yet sure there are still some moving parts players who are still active players who had those bad breakups so I hope maybe this is the era where 10 years, 20 years from now, today's stars can be associated iconically with their teams, brought back in, made a part of the family of the team, if not the direct business of the team. And we can cross promote and celebrate their greatness as we look to the greatness of the present and the future. This video was kindly supported by Dean Tanglis, Butt Pounder 420, Andreas Snazon Westerland, Wendell Full, Ho Chi Mao, J Dubs, Alexander Rao, Blunt Smoking Anus Destroyer, Daniel Olivar, Nate DOGG, Ollie J, Tobias Bernasconi, and a special thanks go out to Jerky's Minion and Wish. Would you like to suggest a topic or a guest for my content? Maybe you'd like to ask me a question in my monthly AMA. Do you want teasers for my upcoming content? See who the guests are. Maybe you'd like to take part in a donated discussion with me on video. Well, put your money where your mouth is and join the Skrilluminati today at link in the description box below.